नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नो वी हैव द ग्लोरीज ऑफ दिस ग्रेट पर्सनालिटीज डॉक्यूमेंटेड सो वेरी वेरी ग्रेटफुल सो रसिकानंद प्रभु इज द डिसाइपल ऑफ श्यामानंद प्रभु एंड श्यामानंद प्रभु इज वन ऑफ द ट्रायो दैट इज श्रीनिवास आचार्य नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर एंड श्यामानंद प्रभु और श्यामानंद पंडित तो समे विल डिस्कस अबाउट श्यामानंद पंडित ऑल्सो इन डीप बट टुडे नो विल डिस्कस अबाउट श्यामानंद प्रभु डिसाइपल इलस्ट्रियस डिसाइपल रसिकानंद प्रभु सो फॉर नेक्स्ट वन आर जस्ट डिप योर सेल्फ इन हियरिंग इज ग्लोरीज बिकॉज मोर वी हियर अबाउट दीज पर्सनैलिटीज मोर वी गेट प्योरिफाइड मोर वी गेट अ विजन ऑफ okay what all things are waiting for us in krishna consciousness more we get greed of attaining the higher aspects of krishna consciousness and more we become humble as and when we hear about these great personalities rasikananda prabhu is one of the disciple gopi vallabha das or gopi jana vallabha das so he wrote a book called rasika mangal and that book documents the glories of rasikananda prabhu right from the time he appeared on through this planet till the point he disappeared from this planet and all glories to his holiness bhakti vikas swami maharaj who translated all that to english you know for uh, the benefit of all the jeevas like ourselves who don't know sanskrit and who don't know bengali zalis <laughs> begin so these great personalities in fact before these great personalities appeared in utkal or the current orissa there was a great turmoil in the entire place always in the entire vaishnav uh, progression or vaishnav lineage progression we see that always will be ups and downs always uh, even eskon went through ups and downs and future also it will be going through some ups and downs for sure <clears throat> when shri prabhupad left there was a down phase in askon when that happened and while having prasad i was thinking that uh, when uh, the prabhupad disciples will leave you know, that phase will come again or maybe not don't know not sure so whenever these great personalities leave always the down phase comes and in that down phase the entire vaishnav community gets shaken completely hmm. and just before this trio all those great personalities were present when they all left so that time there was a great turmoil in the entire vaishnav community especially in orissa in utkal desh there it is described that people started doing so many sins intoxication meat eating gambling illicit sex everything possible and when there were some devotees would go around and do kirtan sankirtan these people would go to beat them you can imagine that was the situation when uh, chand kazi tried stopping the sankirtan in navadweep at that time mahaprabhu taught him a very great lesson and after that he never did that he never attempted to stop the sankirtan and here those devotees were doing sankirtan people were running behind them to beat them and there were times when uh, devotees were pushed and insulted badly only because they were practicing bhakti only because they were chanting the holy names of the lord the hari krishna maha mantra and those devotees they are so compassionate they are all praying to the lord see if someone is troubling us what will be our prayer oh lord please bless him and please take him yes. they also prayed something similar <laughs> but their prayers were very deep they were praying oh lord please bless them please bless them and please destroy their sins and bestow them with pure devotional service onto your lotus feet and praying this they were begging that oh lord please send your own associate 
Please send your own associate who can do the transformations in this in this entire turmoil situation. Please help. This was the prayer. And here in this uh, Rasika Mangal, Gopi Vallabha, Gopi Jana Vallabha Prabhu, he documents and he writes that hearing that prayer of the intense call of the devotees, Srila Rasika Nanda Prabhu appeared onto this planet. This was in the year 1512. He appeared. Where did he appear? There's a place called Malla Bhumi in the glorious city of Rohini near in Utkal. Rohini is a district and this happens to be a province there. And this Rohini, the entire district itself, the entire place itself is so glorious and so wonderful that there was all the opulence present in that place, in and around the entire place. And the person who was heading or the king who was heading this entire place called Mallabhumi, his name was Sri Achyutta Mahashai and his wife's name was Bhavani. Now this is very important to note that Achyuta Mahashaya and Bhavani, both of them were wonderful devotees. And when it comes to these two personalities, they were also you know, praying. And in their house appears Srila Rasikananda Prabhu in the year 1512. And it is described when this great personality appeared in their house. Small baby in the cradle. Very, very beautiful. Bluish, blackish complexion. Effulgent. And the features of the body are described that they had curly hair, newborn baby, curly hair, beautiful eyes, broad chest, strong shoulders, elongated arms reaching through the knees. And the entire body was well formed and very, very attractive and very, very beautiful. People were enamored looking at his beautiful form. Entire body was very, very beautiful. Now it's very nice to note that these personalities are not ordinary, extraordinary personalities. It's not my words. All the people around this baby who are looking at that baby and taking darshan of that baby, they were saying, he cannot be a normal person. He's extraordinary. He's extraordinary. So this was the name-giving ceremony, exam examining his entire wonderful out-of-the-world horoscope the astrologers who were there, they gave him the name Rasika. This was the name that was given to him. And now it's very nice to note that he began his extraordinary superhuman pastime right from the childhood. Now as we know, even in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, when Lord's naming ceremony happened, there was one ceremony where... Uh, no, Anna Prashan. And after Anna Prashan, there is a ceremony where a lot of items are kept around. Specifically, seven items. Seven items are kept around and the baby is left. Go and you know, choose whatever you want. And based on that, you know, people will uh, say, other relatives will say, what will he become in future? So Rasika was kept like that. This was the first grain ceremony, Anna Prashan ceremony. He was fed the grains. And after that, he was kept in such a place where seven items were kept. And one of them was Srimad Bhagavatam. And his mother, Bhavani, she said, Rasika, go and take whatever you want. Now, if we have some knowledge of Annaprashan ceremony, <clears throat> when does it happen? One year is too much. I think before that, six months, something like that. Or less than six months or six months. Hmm? Now, he was just six months. Let's assume he was a six months. And when his mother told like that, he was looking at Srimad Bhagavatam only. And he was looking at Srimad Bhagavatam and his eyes were filled with tears which were rolling down from his little cheeks. And he went very fast to Srimad Bhagavatam. He embraced Srimad Bhagavatam and he was crying in ecstasy. And it is described that this six-month-old baby was exhibiting Ashtasatvik Vikar. Can you imagine that? Eight symptoms of ecstasy. Crying, trembling, hair standing on end. The only thing that we did was pass stool and urine. 
Mm. And look at these great personalities. Not ordinary, not ordinary. Mm. And everyone looked at this, these symptoms and they start saying, he is not an ordinary person. He is not an ordinary person. He is eternal associate of the Lord. He is eternal associate of the Lord. There was a huge talk that started happening around in the relative circle. And it went on. When he grew up a little bit, just a couple of years old, he and his friends, they used to go around doing Sankirtan. No time waste. All the time, only Krishna conscious activities. So what Rasika did was, he called his friends and he wrote names of the Lord on the bodies of his friends. And then he convinced them that we are going to go on the road and you people have to dance on the road. And they will be singing and they will be dancing, there will be instruments played, small kids. And they are going on the street, in the busy streets. Singing is going on, dancing is going on. And whenever these holy names of the Lord are chanted, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is chanted, Krishna's different names are chanted. As soon as Rasika would hear that, as soon as he would hear that, he'll fall on the ground, roll in ecstasy and become unconscious with again all the eight ecstatic symptoms of Krishna Prime. And people around, they would observe what is happening. This boy is not ordinary. This boy is not ordinary. He's extraordinary. He's extraordinary. And sometimes we'll just cry, cry and cry hearing the holy name. Now this cry is not cry of agony or something. This cry is of ecstasy. Uh, we'll not understand all this. The only thing that we know is my rounds are not over, then we'll cry. Just imagine at night, 11 o'clock, 11 rounds are pending. <laughs> that is the time when tears will flow from the eyes that I want to sleep, I'm not able to sleep. But for them, they are relishing something on a different platform altogether. And you would always follow the Vaishnava principles. Small boy, never he'll deviate from the Vaishnava principles. He'll never miss offering obeisances to the Vaishnavas. Never. As soon as he sees a Vaishnava, immediately pays obeisance. This is what is Vaishnava etiquette. This is what is Vaishnava behavior. Is as soon as a person sees a Vaishnava, now he pays obeisance. As soon as he sees Tulasi, Tulsi Maharani, he pays obeisance. And he was doing that. As soon as he sees a Vaishnava, he'll pay obeisance. He sees Tulsi Maharani, he'll pay obeisance. Never he'll miss this opportunity to pay obeisance. And since he was the son of a great king, very wealthy family, so wherever he would go, people would invite him home, give him a lot of sweets. And he'll take all those sweets, he'll offer it to Krishna. He and his friends will circumambulate Tulsi at that time. And then he'll take those sweets, distribute it to the brahmanas, distribute it to his friends, and little bit he will take. Unlike what we do. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain. <laughs> and he was very, very fond of places where saintly people would stay and do their bhajan. He was very fond of those places. He will go and approach saintly people. He'll sit with them, you know, he'll do uh, you know, various activities with them. And he was very fond of those places where Lord's activities were happening. Connected activities to the Lord were very, very attractive for him. Very, very attractive. And wherever he finds that the temple is dirty, it's not kept clean, or wherever Tulsi Maharani is kept and the surrounding is not clean, <clears throat> this small boy, he would go there, clean the entire place, and smear the entire place with cow dung. Cow dung is considered as pure. He'll smear the entire place with cow dung, make it very, very clean. And Rasika Mangal says he would make it as clean as Vaikuntha. And then he'll keep Tulsi Maharani there. And the caretakers of Tulsi Maharani or the temple looking at that scene, they will feel very shameful. We were not able to take care of it. Look at this boy. So wonderfully he took care. So wonderfully he takes care. And naturally, so much of love and devotion towards cows. <clears throat> he would get water, he would get grass and feed them. So in this way, a good amount of childhood days you know, went by. And still, you know, when he was pretty young, so at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a very famous devotee at that time. Now this is second generation of uh, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, second generation devotees. So first generation was the six Goswamis and the trio, Srinivas, Narottam and Shamananda, they are the second generation. 
and you can call a second or third generation Rasikananda Prabhu. So there was a very senior devotee, a Vaishnavi, and her name was Dayal Dasi Thakurani. She was very much known in the Vaishnava community as a very senior. And she was very devoted to Lord Chaitanya, very famous as a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. She came you know, to see this great personality, Rasika. As soon as she saw Rasika, she fainted. Now people around who were there, they started saying that uh, actually she is old and she came in the sun, so she fainted. Hmm. Let's get, get her back to consciousness. And then when she came back to consciousness, she was asked, why did you fall unconscious? And then she said that I was able to see the image of Gopal in this boy. This boy is not ordinary. And she started saying various things. He is that person who will preserve the religious principles. He is that personality who will preach all the 64 limbs of devotional service all around the place. He has appeared in this world to rescue all fallen souls. And she went on and on and on describing the glories of Rasika. And everyone was hearing that. And already everyone was feeling that, yes, he's extraordinary. And this was a great stamp that was given. That is extraordinary. See, one thing is very clear. The great devotees who are free from sinful desires, vasanas, and there's no question of activities, sinful activities. And who are very much connected to the Lord with their intense mode of devotional service, they can scan through any personality who stands in front. Srila hmm. Prabhupada would, be, would do that. He would scan through people who would come in front of them. And many times Prabhupada disciples also do that. The way they look at us like, Sab dekh liye. <laughs> Sab paap dekh liye jo is janam mein kiye, pichle janam mein kiye. And after looking at us, they will not speak even a word. <laughs> Scan through. Because they See, as and when we advance in Krishna consciousness, one thing we have to understand is, we start getting the qualities of Krishna. Our eternal father is Krishna. And his qualities start you know, descending in our existence. And one of the qualities of Lord is Trikala Darshi. He knows everything. Past, present, future. Naturally, pure devotees know past, present, future. Hmm. So, when they look at us, they know, kitne paani mein hai. Externally, how much ever we act as pure, you know, wearing best and best dhoti kurta, putting tilak properly, going in front of them. Like, ye sab nahin. Andar ka gandagi dikh raha hai tera. You useless fellow, stop sinful activity. Stop thinking about sinning. Do some devotional service. Be intense in your mood. And they just leave that place, <laughs> saying all this. <laughs> so when his father, Achuta, heard this, he said, Ado Thakurani, you please bless him so that he gets long life. And may he remain your servant eternally. So whenever people would say that he's an extraordinary child, extraordinary child. So at that time, his father would say, whatever it is, you please bless him so that he gets a long life. This is called as parental affection. They don't see all this, that how great the child is. When Jagannath Mishra, father of uh, Nimai, when he would chastise Nimai, and people around will tell you, he's an ordinary, extraordinary child, why are you chastising him? Whatever it is, he's my son, and I'm supposed to correct him. This is my responsibility. So with that mood, I know these fathers and mothers, they keep doing all these leelas with their kids. And this lady, before leaving that place, this Vaishnavi, before leaving that place, she chanted in the ears of Rasika, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. He's still a very small boy, just a few years old. And after this day, every single day, he was chanting one lakh names of the Lord. That is Hare Krishna Mahavanta. That comes to 64 rounds. And it is so described that without completing his 64 rounds, he'll not eat anything cooked by his mother. And that doesn't mean he'll go out and eat. <laughs> he'll not be eating anything. Nothing he'll put it in his mouth till he completes the 64 rounds. And what was the what, what was his play? 
in the play time the only thing that you'd be doing was always immersed in the leelas of the lord from the 10th canto shrimad bhagavatam they would be reenacting the past times like nityananda prabhu would be doing yes like like nityananda prabhu was doing like that even this great personality rasika he would be enacting various past times reenacting these various past times of lord krishna someone will become vasudev someone devaki and they are in the prison kans is there and all those atrocious activities is doing sometimes someone will dress as putana agasur bakasur and then krishna is going and killing them and then krishna kidnapping rukmini krishna marrying satya bhama all these past times and people around will be astonished to see that how much this boy is absorbed in all these past times and he would be so absorbed so very absorbed that he'll forget to take prasad he and in his association as friends so one day achuta his father achut prabhu his father he said that i'll not send you out now please you forget to take your meal and at that time rasika said i will not go out to play if i get an opportunity to hear shrimad bhagavatam in the house and achut achuta was so happy he immediately called the brahmana and discourse on shrimad bhagavatam started every day in the house now the father and son both would be sitting in the class the son would be sitting on the lap of the father the brahmana is reciting shrimad bhagavatam various past times of the lord and rasika sometimes tears flowing from his eyes sometimes falling off from the lap of his father and rolling on the ground ecstatic ecstatic not like us we also fall but this is not because of ecstasy <laughs> and in this way they both would sit for hours together and rasika would be completely absorbed in hearing the past times completely absorbed one of his favorite play was he would take some mud and he'll make a form of krishna he'll decorate that form you know with various clothes and ornaments and then he'll offer a lot of seva a lot of worship to the deity and he'll be very very attached to the deity and when he would be worshiping he would instruct his friends you have to sing and dance ki bajayo gaurachan <laughs> sing and dance the time came when a schooling was supposed to start ab tak school nahi ja raha tha wo can you imagine what would be the age then gurukul admission is done at the age of 5 so before 5 years past times i was telling till now now after 5 or at 5 and later the past time starts now so on a very very auspicious day the family members decided to send rasika to school they all blessed him and he started going to school he used to not cry maybe very happy going to school and he began studying sanskrit in the school of a person called vasudev now he would be going there there a lot of prerequisite for sanskrit looks like so all that different things like the letters various you know alphabets just by glance at those alphabets he remembered everything and after some time he mastered all the difficult lessons which are needed to start sanskrit grammar and in few days he mastered all of that and he started learning sanskrit grammar the teacher who was there he was astonished to see he said i i myself took one or two years to learn all this and this boy has learned everything in few days oh achuta oh king oh achut mahashay your son is not ordinary he is extraordinary he is extraordinary mm-hmm. and he soon became scholar in six philosophies the six schools of thought he became very scholar in that and after studying all these scriptures finally he came to granthraj shrimad bhagavatam and he went to another person whose name was jagannath mishra professor jagannath mishra he went there and then he started studying bhagavatam under him jagannath mishra would be observing him and rasika would be scrutinizingly studying each and every verse of bhagavatam and he'll be giving commentary on each of them and whenever jagannath mishra when he would hear the commentary he'll get into ecstasy and he'll be so happy so very happy to hear that and he would tell this you know to his father also your son is extraordinary not ordinary not ordinary hmm. 
One day, Mishra was very happy, very happy hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Rasika. You know what he did? He was so happy, so ecstatic, he embraced Rasika. As soon as he embraced Rasika, he fell unconscious in ecstasy. He fell unconscious and when he came, when he came back to consciousness, he was rolling on the ground, tears flowing from, sorry, tears flowing from his eyes. And it's described that all the Ashtasatvik Vikar of Krishna Prem was manifest in his body. And he said that touch of this boy has awakened devotion in me. Just by taking his darshan, just by looking at him, just by observing him, all my sins will be destroyed. Who is saying this? Teacher is saying this. And after some time, he moved to another teacher. And his name was Dubey. And this Dubey was also a great devotee. We'll call him as Dubey Prabhu. Yes. So Dubey Prabhu was also a great devotee. Now, the, these two personalities, when they came together, there was a nice match. Both of them will get absorbed in Srimad Bhagavatam. To such an extent that they will forget eating and sleeping. They will all the time be reciting Srimad Bhagavatam absorbed in the various pastimes. And there was a good match. And Achuta was also very happy. The king Achuta, he was also very happy. And both of them, they will get into ecstasy, rolling on the ground, crying, unconscious. It was so nice, right? The Bhagavatam speaker is speaking. He falls down unconscious. The audience falls down unconscious. And everyone rolling on the ground, crying in ecstasy, calling out Krishna, Krishna. Mm -hmm. Don't know when that will happen. <laughs> During Srila Prabhupada's time, the schedule would be so hectic for the devotees. They would not get proper sleep. I think that's what is there in Parampara even now. And during Bhagavatam class, the audience would fall asleep. So one of the Prabhupada disciples was sharing this. That he was there in the deity kitchen and he was hearing the class. And then after some time, the audio stopped. He went out to see what happened. He saw that Bhagavatam spe speaker is sleeping and the audience is also sleeping. <laughs> it's called ecstasy of his con. <laughs> ecstasy of his con devotees. But on a serious note, it's, it was a very wonderful match of the teacher and the student. Both of them, they were relishing Krishna consciousness. Both of them were, they were relishing Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes it so happens that the Bhagavatam speaker is in ecstasy and the devotees who are sitting as the audience, hearing the class, they keep looking, Are you <laughs> Stop. But here the match was really amazing. He was speaking, Rasika was hearing. Rasika would speak, he would hear. Went on and on and on. There was one incident that happened which was not very uh, sublime, very, very painful. They came to 10th Canto, a section where Lord Krishna was leaving Vrindavan. So the recitation is going on that Akrura came and Krishna, he took Krishna out of Vrindavan. And all the gopis and everyone was crying in separation. And as soon as Rasika heard this, this small boy, he started crying and crying and crying in sorrow and sadness. And he started telling, loudly he started shouting, Why, oh Krishna, why are you doing this? Why are you leaving these gopis like this? And he went on to speak. Oh Lord, why are you so cruel to her? She left everything for you and she came to you. He's talking about maybe Srimati Radharani. And you left her like this in pain and agony? She's fasting day and night just remembering you. She remembers you even in the dream. You didn't think about Mother Yashoda? You, th don't, you didn't think about Nanda Maharaj? What will happen to them? How will they keep their life in this body? How will they remain alive? Why you did this, O oh cheater? Where has Krishna, the Lord of my life, gone? Where has Krishna, the Lord of my life, gone? And from that day onwards, continuously, every day, 24 by 7, he was just crying. Loudly he would cry and people around, they would come and see what's wrong with him. Why is he crying so much? Maybe some air imbalance inside? Some disease? What does he want? I don't know what was the situation of the teacher if the child cries so much. And after some time, one, one fine day, 
he went outside the house he entered the forest and in the forest he is crying oh krishna where have you gone oh krishna where have you gone why did you leave them why did you leave them and in the forest which was thick dense forest with wild animals he was rolling on the ground in ecstasy and for seven continuous days he was not found and king achyuta got to know that so and so thing has happened he got 100 people and they all entered the forest the dense forest they were all scared what would have happened to our boy rasika and they're all searching where is rasika where is rasika and finally they found him lying on the floor fully effulgent with his beautiful curly hair as if there was a floating on the ground he was lying there achyut mahashay he went there he picked up his boy kept him on his lap at that time rasika opened his eyes he came back to his senses and achyut mahashay took him took him home but his crying is not stopping at all he is crying he looks at his father he looks down and he keeps crying crying tears and achyuta was completely devastated looking at the situation completely devastated he asked dubai prabhu dubai prabhu what happened why is he crying like this so at that time this prabhu said that don't worry he is experiencing love of godhead and dubey prabhu had compiled a book called bhagavatamrita and in that he had mentioned some of the reasons why krishna left and he says a very nice thing that this he narrates huh? when he was crying like this he narrates that after 3 months krishna came back to braja and gave bliss to all the residents of brindavan and this secret this confidential thing only the exalted devotees know others don't know and as soon as rasika heard this that krishna came back to brindavan he was extremely happy he stopped crying after that now i was when i was reading i was thinking that what past time is this all the time a small boy in such ecstasy not able to bear means he was putting himself in the mood of the gopis and the gopis are crying this person is crying not able to bear the separation from krishna these are our acharyas right from childhood right from childhood exhibiting love of god it's not like us they'll do sadhana 16 rounds and you know increase not stuck in anartha nivritti for a long time struggling with one's own vasanas nothing doing is growing and growing and growing for them we keep growing little bit but when it comes to them they're already there at that platform they have come just to deliver all of us we belong to this parampara gaudiya vaishnava parampara so glorious so wonderful there was a great personality another great personality called balabhadra this balabhadra he was king of another area he had a beautiful daughter and her name was ichha devi and her description when people would tell her description they'll talk about her way the way the goddess of fortune is described she is not different from lakshmi her qualities are like lakshmi she is so great she is so beautiful and on and on and on and she was also a very great devotee right from childhood like rasika was a great devotee she was also a great devotee mm-hmm. to such an extent that she was always chanting the holy names of the lord and she will also do this child play taking some mud making the form of the lord decorating and offering a lot of worship and then she will offer a prayer and that prayer was that oh lord please bless me with a husband like yourself i want to become his maid servant this was a prayer and here achyuta got to know about balabhadra that balabhadra has got a daughter and achyuta was always thinking that we should get rasika married now the entire thought process started at that time balabhadra was invited to his home and uh, achyut mahasha he is speaking to balabhadra and at that time balabhadra speaks about his daughter and there's a good exchange that happens and at one point of time balabhadra he was under some other king some other yavana king and this yavana king took away all his possessions and all that so balabhadra 
was rescued by Achyut Mahashay. And that day when he was rescued, he came to the house of Achyut Mahashay. And on that day, very, very beautiful, handsome looking personality, Rasika, he entered that place. And he went there and he sat beside his father Achyut Mahashay. And Balabhadra just kept on taking darshan of Rasika. Looking at his beautiful form, his curly hair, his complexion, bluish blackish complexion, his entire body was effulgent, completely effulgent. And Balabhadra was in love with Rasika. And at that time he proposes Achyut Mahashay, the father of Rasika, that I would like to give my daughter in marriage to your boy, your son, Rasika, Sri Rasika. And uh, here, Achyuta was also very, very happy. And it is described that Balabhadra, you know, the entire marriage was fixed, everything was set. But unfortunately, due to some, re some reason, Balabhadra left his body even before marriage. And his brother Sadashiv, Balabhadra's brother Sadashiv, he arranged a huge, grand marriage ceremony. And the marriage ceremony happened in a very, very wonderful way. Now, Sri Rasika and his wife, whose name was Icha Devi, they both came to the house of the king, Achyut Mahashay. Now, personalities like Sri Rasika, who are renunciants, who are dipped and absorbed in Krishna consciousness, they have nothing to do with family. All the time, you would just be absorbed in Granthra Srimad Bhagavatam. You'd be roaming around to different, different sadhus, sitting in their class and hearing, rolling on the ground in ecstasy, crying in ecstasy for a good number of days, not coming home, entering the forest, now doing various things, various uh, devotional activities there. It was going on and on and on. And one day, Achut Mahashay, he caught him and he got him. He said, you do whatever you want in the house. You do whatever you want in the house, I'll give you whatever you want. And at that time, Sri Rasika, he says a very beautiful thing. I thought I'll read that verbatim. Rasika replied, Dear Father, I see family, wealth and prestige as all false. Krishna is only truth. Krishna is true wealth. Krishna's devotees are real. His pastimes are reality. Reality is Vrindavan. The gopis are the son of Nanda Maharaj. Sankirtan is real. The holy name of Krishna is reality. The Guru and devotion to Lord Krishna are reality. Listen, Father, for this is the essence of the Vedas. And he is saying, Dedicate yourself to Krishna. Krishna is the life of all. Worship of Krishna is the conclusion of the revealed scriptures. Brahma, Narada, Shiva, Shuka, Indra and other demigods know only Krishna and nothing else. Hearing this, Achyut Mahashaya also became a dedicated devotee. <laughs> it's a very important thing to note. It's not about just preaching. We can preach. We can speak a lot of things. But our preaching might just give some information to the other person, but will not lead to any transformation. But when someone is dipped in Krishna consciousness and convinced about Krishna consciousness, for whom the reality is only Krishna and His holy names and the Vaishnavas, that person can do something to this world in a positive note. That person is the one who can bring transformation in this entire world. And here we can see Sri Rasika has all the power to transfer anyone and everyone. Because he is that personality who is completely dipped in Krishna consciousness. Completely dipped in Krishna consciousness. And I'm sure his wife, Icha Devi, would also be very happy because she was a devotee right from childhood. She wanted you know, someone exalted. So in this way, it went on and on and on. These pastimes went on and on and on. Achyut Mahasha, he had many houses in Utkal, in Orissa. And one such house was in a place called Gantashila. So Achyut Mahasha took his son also, Rasika, let's go. And Sri Rasika also went with, with uh, Chut Mahasaya, his father. Both of them went to Gantashila. Now there was no change in Sri Rasika. 
His activities went on and on and on. The same activities being dipped in Srimad Bhagavatam. Always absorbed in the pastimes of Srimad Bhagavatam. It went on and on and on. Mm-hmm. One day, he was in a great ecstatic mood. Again in the forest, in a different mood altogether, chanting the holy names, being absorbed in the pastimes of the Lord. And he had a vision of Lord Krishna. He was able to get Sakshat Darshan of Lord Krishna. He was able to see that beautiful form, Lord Krishna standing in threefold bending form. His beautiful curly hair with the turban, with the forest flowers on the head, with the peacock feather, with beautiful eyes, with bluish blackish complexion, the Vaijayanti Mala extending till the knees, the various ornaments that Krishna was wearing, including Kaustubha gem, his beautiful lotus feet. This darshan, this darshan, Sri Rasika got. And at that time, Lord, he started speaking to Rasika. And he said that you have to take shelter of a personality whose name is Shamananda Prabhu. And this Shamananda Pandit or this Shamananda will help you to get closer to me. He will get you closer to me. And saying this, Lord disappeared from the vision of Sri Rasika. And as soon as Lord disappeared from the vision of Rasika, the only thing that Rasika was doing, Rasikananda Prabhu was doing, he was just crying and crying and crying, now in sadness, not in ecstasy, crying in separation from Krishna. That, oh Krishna, where did you go? Why am I not getting your darshan? Where did you go? And he was just crying all the time now. Rolling on the ground. Where are you? Where are you? Why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? See, when it comes to us, we cannot understand what it, what it means to be separated from Krishna. For us, we'll, we'll give philosophy at that time. Holy name is Krishna. Deity is Krishna. Bhagavatam is Krishna. Why are you crying? <laughs> How can a Baddha Jeev like us know what it means to be separated from the Lord? How can we, as the fallen souls, understand what it means to take Sakshat Darshan of Krishna? How can we understand this? Sometimes it's really uh, pathetic that when we read such pastimes that they're getting Sakshat Darshan of the Lord and Lord is speaking to them. And when it comes to us, we are stuck in our own life so badly, so fallen, with our own anartha, sex desires filled in the existence, both gross and subtle. All the time, just thinking about one's own self, how to do better sense gratification. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand also what, what is our destination, what is our gati, what is going to happen to us. Here, personality is like Rasikananda, they're getting sakshat darshan of the Lord and they're feeling separation from the Lord. And for us, the only thing that we will feel sad for is I'm separated from my sense, sense gratificatory object. I'm not able to do better sense gratification. Can you imagine our pathetic situation? Yes. Will we get Sakshat Darshan of the Lord this life? Yes. Will something like that happen in our life also? Yes. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. First and foremost, you know, to attain this exalted state, one has to have the greed of attaining Krishna this life. Unless and until we don't have that laulium, that greed, that, oh Krishna, I want you. I want to attain you. Where is the question of attaining Krishna? There is no question of attaining Krishna. One should have that intense greed to attain Krishna. And that intense greed, if someone has that intense greed, that will be reflected in his intense practice of devotional service. Accompanied by intense prayers. This will be seen in that devotee. When it comes to us, we are stuck in our own lives. Intense greed of something material. Intense prayers of attaining something material. It goes on and on and on. Hmm. How will we attain Krishna? Hmm. Such a pathetic situation. Whenever I think about myself, I feel so pathetic. Where am I? Where am I heading towards? Will that day come in my life also? If we don't get this very great opportunity to attain Krishna this life, what is the use of this human form? What did we do then? It's almost like a dog took birth and dog died. That's exactly how our situation will be. We appeared, we celebrated happy birthday to you. 
we cut some cakes, we extinguished some fire, and we left this body. And that body is burned in fire. This dog came, dog left. Therefore, it's described by the great devotee is, what is the use of your eyes if you have not taken darshan of Krishna? What is the use? Therefore, it's very, very important to have that intense greed to attain Krishna this life. If we don't have that greed, if we don't have that laulyam which Rupa Goswami talks about, we cannot advance in bhakti. Not possible to advance in bhakti. Not possible. Hmm. Therefore, it's very, very important to cultivate that greed. That yes, I want to attain Krishna. We cannot be satisfied. I finished my 16 rounds, done for today. I you know, finished my 30 minutes reading, 30 minutes hearing, finished, done for today. At about 24 by 7, he was absorbed and crying. So we have to compare ourselves, you know, what, I don't know, we can compare also. We are somewhere, we are somewhere. Yes, that's our pathetic situation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this greed will drive us in Krishna consciousness. This greed will take us closer and closer to Krishna. If this greed is not there, then it's very difficult. Many times people want to switch to Raganuga directly. Spontaneous devotional service. How is it possible? Without, what do you mean by Raganuga Bhakti? Raganuga Bhakti means the person is greedy and attached to the goal. And then he renders spontaneous devotional service. Here we are struggling to chant our rounds and we want to switch to Raganuga Bhakti. Where is the question of Raga? Where is the question of attachment? There is no attachment that is there. Look at him. This is called attachment. This is called attachment. And how much Lord takes personal interest in such devotee's life? See this. Lord is personally appearing and saying that this personality is your spiritual master. This devotee will take you or this devotee will get you closer to me. Go take a shelter. And here we do IDC, we do this, we do that and still confused. Prabhuji, so many options. We don't know to take Diksha from. Yeah. Because our state is that. Sometimes one devotee was sharing, he was asking me, so Prabhuji, should I wait for a revelation? For taking Diksha? I said, there'll be no revelation, don't worry. <laughs> there'll be no revelation. Just hear some lectures of different spiritual masters and see whom you can understand and connect with and take initiation from that person. Mm -hmm. There's no question of you know, getting a dream and a revelation and suddenly that spiritual master will appear. I am your guru, I'll give you tomorrow, I'll come, you take Diksha from me. I said, Kuch hoga. Yes. But these devotees... Lord personally comes. Here Lord personally came in dream of Rasika. Mm -hmm. Sri Rasika. And in Vrindavan, by the way, Rasi, Sri Rasika is in Orissa. And in Sri Vrindavan Dham, we have Shamananda Pandit. Lord came in the dream mm -hmm. or he appeared for Shamananda Pandit also and he instructed Shamananda Pandit that you should go to Utkal Desh and you should initiate this devotee whose name is Rasika, Sri Rasika. This was the instruction given. And here Shamanand Pandit, Lord has come and told and he is thinking twice. How will I leave Vrindavan? If I have to go to Utkal means I have to leave Vrindavan. <clears throat> How much attachment these devotees have to Vrindavan? How much attachment? They are thinking twice. Lord has come and told Baba, go. And you know how many times Lord came and told him? Three times. And still he is thinking, should I go? And then he is having a battle in his mind. See, I have to go because Lord has ordered. But how can I leave Vrindavan? If I have to go to Utkal, it means I have to leave Vrindavan. How can I leave Vrindavan? Sometimes I really wonder that what attachments these devotees have and what attachment we have. Yes. So sometimes to shorten the hair, we think, how can I shorten my hair? <laughs> how, can I how can I shave my beard? How can I not wear the modern dress and wear only dhoti kurta? Some petty things we are attached to of this world. Some petty things of this material world, like getting attached to the opposite gender, getting attached to sense gratificatory objects. These are our attachments. Should I do this sense gratification or that sense gratification? <laughs> Oh, I'm not understanding. I need counseling. Let me approach my counselor. <laughs> this is our fallen state. This is our fallen state. When it comes to Shaman and Pandit, he's thinking, how can I leave Vrindavan? Lord has come thrice and he has told, and he's not listening. You know what Lord did finally? 
लॉर्ड अपियर टू जीव गोस्वामी शिक्षा गुरु श्यामानंद पंडित एंड ही टोल्ड श्याम जीव गोस्वामी आई एव इंस्ट्रक्टेड इम थ्राइस एंड इज नॉट गोइंग एंड देन जीव गोस्वामी कम्स एंड टेल्स इम दिस वॉट लॉर्ड टोल मी गेट लॉस फ्रॉम यूर ऑब्वियसली डेंट से दैट so jeeva goswami got to know jeeva goswami contacted shyamanand pandit then shyamanand pandit had to leave the place with lot of pain in the heart taking the love of burden the instruction of the lord he started from shri brindavan dham with his four other associates so these five people they came to agra and stayed in agra for some time and the king was ruling there you no know, he started feeling that who are these people why are they staying here what is their background looks like some decoits and he captured all five of them and put them behind bars started from rindavan ended up in jail and that same night when they were put behind bars the same night a very ferocious looking person appeared to this king and he was there on the chest and beating him left and right blood was coming out from his mouth you know that king's mouth is beating him left and right he was crying the king was crying leave me leave me and this person this ferocious person he said you have kept my devotees my favorite devotees in the jail you have to suffer i'll kill you and he like no no i'll release them i'll release them leave me leave me and all the relatives had to come there to see what's happening why is he shouting like this in the middle of the night and he was he was lying on the ground his you know entire face you know was uh, disfigured there was blood that was coming out from his mouth and he told one of the relative go and release those five people they are all dear to lord krishna and someone went and immediately released them and said you are very dear to krishna please forgive us and this king also came running and he fell at the feet of shyamanand pandit and said please forgive me you are a favorite devotee of krishna and i captured you here can you imagine how much lord does for pure devotees bapre isn't that next level so without we doing doing devotion we want that reciprocation lord should protect me i'll ride the bike in full speed something happen lord should come and then you know lift my bike little bit <laughs> no accident should happen i shouldn't get any health issues lord should reciprocate with me nicely sometimes devotees they become morose and they come and say prabhu ji lord is not reciprocating only with me every day i'm chanting 16 rounds in attentively <laughs> still lord is not reciprocating yes i'm not committing many offenses just then <laughs> just then offenses to the holy name that's it still lord is not coming and he is reciprocating with me therefore we have to understand that how lord reciprocates with whom in our life lord reciprocates with us with whatever little devotional service we are doing he reciprocates with us by giving us an opportunity to practice bhakti every single day so if you are able to practice bhakti consistently one has to understand lord has reciprocated with us if lord is giving us the determination to have only prasad be in the association of devotees stay in the family of devotees and render some service reciprocation of the lord we shouldn't expect much that i'll be put behind bars lord will go and beat that person lord will come and beat us <laughs> why you did this you rascal anyways so they were released from there and they started going and they went to prayag they went to varanasi and from there they came to utkal and in utkal what happened is they started searching that where is this rasika where is the shri rasika before that i would like to make one point no since shyamanand pandit has already reached utkal before he meets rasika one point to note see in spiritual life one thing is very very important the faith that lord will do the needful if i am sincere now just imagine shri rasika such a sincere intense serious devotee for him lord how much lord is doing just think about it first lord comes you know to him and he says your spiritual master is shyamanand pandit and then lord goes to shyamanand pandit and he says you should go and initiate rasika three times and when shaman pandit is not listening he goes to his guru jeeva goswami and he tells jeeva goswami that see your disciple shaman and pandit he is not listening can you imagine all this therefore one very very important thing in krishna consciousness is if you are sincere and serious 
Lord will send the right people at the right time in our life to give us the right help. This gives a lot of confidence, you know. At least for me, it gives a lot of confidence. Because the things are in our hand. It's not that some third party is going to come and change our life. No. Things are in our hand. If we are sincere, the rest of the things Lord will take care. Sincere. Lord is extremely sincere in reciprocating. The only thing that he expects is our sincerity and very, very serious attitude towards Krishna consciousness. In this way, the entire process of devotional service is very flawless. See, when it comes to this material world, at times people think, that I'm doing this, but will I get the result or not? What if that devote, that person comes and take over my result? Maybe, you know, my, the promotion, the position that I'm going to get after being promoted, maybe this employee might get it. Only that person can come first. I also want to come first. We are almost equal, but I think he'll replace me. But in Krishna consciousness, one thing we have to understand is there's no question of replacement. There's no question of someone taking over us. There's no question of all this. It's an individual journey. And in that individual journey, Lord is there with us. He keeps watching. How much sincere we are we? How much greed we have to attain Him? How much we want to advance? And He helps us at every step of our life. He pulls us. I don't know how many of you have experienced. Sometimes Lord pulls us to a place and we don't know why He has got us here. And suddenly some devotee comes in our life. We are completely stuck and the devotee comes and then He picks us up from that place. At least personally we have experienced that... Uh, Whenever we needed help, especially in the critical situations, Lord did, you know, Lord very wonderfully helped in various ways by sending devotees at the right time and giving right guidance at the right time. This gives a lot of confidence in devotional service. A lot of confidence. And it also gives us a lot of impetus to remain sincere, become sincere, exponentially become sincere and exponentially become serious in Krishna consciousness. This gives a lot of impetus. Look at this, how much Lord did for Sri Rasikananda Prabhu. How much? And in this way, Shamanand Pandit has reached Utkal. And there he is asking, where is Sri Rasika? For your information, Sri Rasika was famous everywhere. For his devotion, for his scholarship. Great Pandits would come and talk to him. And then Shamanand Pandit with his four associates, they got to know that Sri Rasika is in a place called Gantashila. And they went to that place. And at that place, in the, in the house or in the great palace of uh, Achyut Mahashaya, there was Bhagavatam discourse that was going on. And in that discourse, a Brahmana was speaking and Sri Rasika was sitting and hearing with great eagerness. Achyut Mahashaya is sitting and hearing so many great personalities, so many great personalities are sitting there and hearing the Bhagavatam discourse. And in the entire assembly, this Effulgent personality, Shaman and Pandit enters. Golden perform. Beautiful. Be it his facial features or be it bodily features. Everything very beautiful. And he enters. And that effulgent personality, when he entered, everyone started looking at him. Sri Rasika was looking at him. Achyut Mahashaya was looking at him. Even the Brahmana was speaking. Bhagavatam, he stopped speaking and he was looking at Shaman and Pandit. These are our Acharyas. Hmm. These are our Acharyas. These are the Acharyas in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Parampara. Exalted, exemplary, out of this world. Hmm. They, can, they can conquer anyone and everyone. That's the glory of our Acharyas. And here we see that Shaman Pandit, when he entered, everyone was completely stunned just looking at him, taking his darshan. He was given a place to sit. He sat with his four associates. Bhagavatam discourse got over. People started leaving one by one. Achyut Mahashay left. The Bhagavatam speaker left. Other Brahmana started leaving. And at that time, Sri Rasika, he came to Shaman and Pudnit. Now again, both of them, they have not seen each other. They don't know about each other. But both of them, they've got instruction from the Lord, from the same Lord that you both have to meet. And Shaman and Pudnit was instructed that you have to go there and initiate. So Guru is coming to the would-be disciple to initiate him. Now Shamanan Pandit was also thinking that where is this Sri Rasika? And then when this uh, personality came, Sri Rasika came close to Shamanan Pandit. 
he fell flat at the lotus feet of shyamanand pandit and at that time shyamanand pandit asked him that uh, who is he who son is he and at that time you know, other people said he is the son of achut mahashaya and his name is shri rasika and shyamanand pandit he was so happy to meet his would be disciple he embraced him and he said you are very special krishna has instructed me i have i have left vrindavan because of his instruction i have come here to utkal desh just to meet you and there started a very personal private confidential discourse on vrindavan or the bhajan the secret confidential bhajan of how to advance krishna consciousness he started instructing about various features of the lord and his associates about lord krishna about shrimati radharani how to approach them what is the mood in which the person has to approach and it went on and on and on and here rasika when he was hearing all this already he was there on a different platform when he was hearing all this he was so happy so ecstatic he was crying in ecstasy with, with ashta satvik vikar in the body and shamanan pandit was so pleased to see you know, such a great soul he embraced shri rasika i don't know if we can comprehend what it means to please the spiritual master and what it means to get that loving embrace from the spiritual master when he is pleased i don't know if we can understand that is ab tak to aaj tak to aise kuch kiya nahi hum yes pata nahi karenge bhi ya nahi in this way it went on so this is the first section of the book called eastern wave and maybe next time sometime we'll discuss about the southern wave there are four parts so we'll discuss about the future past times of what happened later how shamanand pandit initiated shri rasika and he became rasika nanda prabhu how he initiated ichha devi how he initiated the two son one daughter and one son of shri rasika and how both of them together fearlessly preached in the entire utkal and converted so many rogues into vaishnavas it goes on the past time goes on therefore in this past time one thing that we can meditate on is first and foremost we should have full confidence in the parampara that our parampara is not ordinary this is the first thing that all any time when we hear about our acharyas is the first thing that should ring in our mind that my parampara or the parampara to which i'm connected to is not ordinary is extraordinary even when i'm not qualified i've been given this opportunity to serve this parampara and what can i do to serve this parampara i should cultivate the greed to attain krishna this life if at all i'm able to become a perfected pure devotee all these personalities in the parampara will be pleased and we never know all these personalities will come to embrace us with so much happiness you have done it and at the same time once intense greed to attain krishna should be reflected in one's intense practice of devotional service with intense prayers to attain krishna and this all starts from chanting one has to go deep in one's chanting it cannot be halka halka chanting after reading about rasikananda prabhu i was feeling happy at one end and i was feeling extremely sad at other end this one happiness that was there was oh, such a glorious parampara the sadness that was there was that when will i meet their expectations when will that day come and will meet their expectations because as of now we are struggling with our chanting itself we are not able to chant properly we are not able to dip in ourselves in devotional service properly how will we advance in krishna consciousness so we have to contemplate on this point and become more and more serious in krishna consciousness and some day when we advance in bhakti these great personalities will be pleased with us and by their blessing we'll advance more and more and more and finally that day will come in our life also vaishnava prabhupad says it is possible to take darshan of krishna eye to eye and talk to him personally he writes this in bhagavatam purports so with this greed let's practice bhakti and always let's express our gratitude to shila prabhupad that by his mercy you know we all have come to devotional service and we're discussing about the acharyas in the parampara 
to which Shila Prabhupada has connected us, connected all of us. So on this note, I'd like to stop here. Shri Rasikananda Prabhu ki, Shamanan Pandit ki, Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada ki. Yeah.